This is one of my favorite macros and here's why. Let's say you're in the middle of an intense programming session, you have time code running, and you know that on a specific beat, you need a bump sequence of some sort. You're like, oh, in order to make this perfect, I need this to be a, uh, a, a go plus with a release time of say a second. Well, you could go into your sequence, you could disable wrap around, you could come over here, you could add your fade time in that you want. That's all great, but that takes time, time that you don't have in the middle of programming. What you can do with this macro, tap the macro, tap the sequence, and you're presented with a list of options you can choose from. I will choose my go plus release sequence with a one second fade time. And boom, now this sequence has been changed. The type is now a follow cue. It has a release time of one second. Wraparound has been disabled. This is great. But let's say, oh, actually, I need this to be a temp, a temps executor with maybe like half a second release time or something. I'll tap this again. I'll go over here. I'll be like, I need this to be a temp release with half a second fade time. Boom. And now this has been set. You can see if I have a second fade time, the key has been set to temp. We can run this and we're all good. Look at that. That's so great. But now maybe, oh, actually we need to, uh, I, I don't need this sequence anymore. Maybe this, this has been cut. I'm going to tap the macro, tap the sequence. I'm just going to reset it. I want everything to be gone. All of uh, wraparound has now been turned back on. We have no follow. Everything's been set out to zero and the queue has been labeled empty. This is a big help. This macro is amazing. I use it all the time. It takes a bit of setup work, but once you have got that set up, you're, it, this is amazing. So stick around. It's quite a bit of syntax. We're going to get through it. But yeah, like this video, subscribe. Let's do this. Okay. So in order to pull this off, we need two macros and one sequence. I've already created those. Let's edit the first one. Okay. Uh, and let's just label this exec type. All right. In our first line, we're going to set the first of a couple variables that we're going to need in order to pull this off set global var I'm gonna call it exec type oh my exec type page uh, in our next line we will select that variable and now we're gonna add a go to sequence command that we haven't created yet, but we will. Exec type. Okay. Uh, now, for this particular thing, we're going to need to change the weight on this first line to go. We want to add this to the command line and we don't want it to execute. Um, and I'll show you why once we kind of go through what everything is actually doing. So, this is our first macro, and this is the macro we're actually going to be running in order to. Uh, do this thing. So uh, we're going to hit this macro, hit our sequence, and then everything else will happen. This is the easy part. <laughs> okay. Now let's first, let's change this sequence to be exec type. You store a couple extra keys here through three. I'm only going to do three examples for this because that full list, if we do that, we will take quite a while, <laughs> but you, the principle applies. We're going to make a reset. We're going to do a go release let's say a one second release time and then we'll also do a temp release as well maybe with a half a second i use a little dash there to indicate uh, a point because you can't do points in here okay so in the command column and this is all that we're going to be really uh, this is what we're going to focus in on we're going to need to set a, a variable here so let's set go global var exec time one and you can use uh, a semicolon here to indicate different um, uh, different commands so you can put them all in here as well we're going to have a macro set exec type this is what we're going to name our second macro dot go underscore a release another semicolon there uh, and we'll do off sequence exec type. Okay. So here we're setting a global variable exec time. We're setting that variable to be one. We have a macro here, and we're going to be running that macro. And you might wonder what this point and what this um, the go, the go r actually means. And what this means is it's not going to run the entire macro. It's only going to run the lines labeled go r, go release, right? And then we're going to off the sequence as well, uh, this final command. All right. So that is our, our first 
our first step. Now let's go to our macro over here. First, let's label this set exec type so it matches uh, what we set up here. And now we can go in here and we can add a bunch of macro lines. Let's just add like 20 or 21 or something. Yeah. Okay, so let's take, we're going to need five lines, I think, to pull this off. And let's label these all go R so that way it matches. And now we're going to start adding our commands here. We're going to set sequence property uh, wrap around. And we're going to set that to be off. Um, so what we're doing now is we're essentially doing what you would do to create a go release sequence with a time of whatever right <laughs> we're just sent doing that in a macro as opposed to you having to do all of that uh, manually we're going to set the queue uh, off queue we're going to set that property uh, we want this to be trig type we're going to set that to be follow quite a bit of syntax here set set Q through property uh, Q fade I want to set this to be zero set Q off Q uh, property Q fade and we're going to now reference that variable that we set earlier exec time so this line is going to set the off Q fade time to be whatever the variable at that current moment is for exec time which we set in the sequence remember how we set that to be one so we don't need separate macro lines for each uh, each one that has a different time. We're just having separate macro lines for each type of queue, like a go release, a go tap, all that kind of stuff. All right, and our last line here will be uh, set. We're going to reference our variable here, exec type page. We're going to reference again the property. Uh, the property key. We're going to set that to be go. I mean, it should already, it might already be there, but it might not. Okay, so this this all looks pretty good. Again, quite a bit of syntax, but really, this is all the stuff we would have to set manually in order to get this to do what we want. Um, one thing that we do have to change, though, and you might have caught on to this, is we have to change our wait column from uh, follow to go because remember that follow means that the the last queue, the last queue, the last line has to execute before the next line can. Uh, but this is a problem when we're only referencing specific lines. We don't, want, we won't want this entire macro to run because we're going to have all of our different options in here, <laughs> and that would not be great if it's like resetting your executor. It's saying it's like that would just be messy. So what we have to change this to is go, so that way it only runs the lines that are triggered. Um, that we want it to trigger. Okay, so now that we have all of this ready and good to go, we should, and I say should, be able to tap our first one. You'll notice it puts that first um, option in here. And basically, this is going to set the global variable exec type page to be whatever we click next. So if I click this sequence, we'll get this little pop up here that we had earlier. And I can now tap go release one second. And uh, now we have all of that data and you won't be able to see it in here because I don't have those options currently selected. Maybe that was a poor choice. We can go in here uh, and we can see it. The off queue has been set to follow and the time the queue fade has been set to one. Um, yeah, so it, it's done everything that we needed to do. If we go to edit, edit setting, wraparound's been turned off. It's done everything uh, that we asked it to do basically, which is quite quite cool. So that's the first one. Now let's make our other options. Okay, so now let's go back to our sequence. And now that we kind of have the general vibe of this, let's, uh, let's set this. What we can do here is we'll just copy this line. And we're going to uh, do our temp one next. 
So first thing that we need to change here is we want this to be a half a second. So what we have to do is we have to do 0 0.50, but that can stay the same. And uh, over here, we're going to name that in the macro, we're going to name it uh, temp release. And then we're going to offset. So all, all of this rest stuff, it can all stay the same. This is, uh, this is all good. And this is basically the same macro. We just adjusted the variables within it. And now let's go to our reset option. Um, and for this one, we're going to have an exec time of zero because this is going to be our complete reset. We're going to set exec type and we want this to be again a reset. And then off sequence exec type. So I've only made these three options, but what you can do is you can go through and make each of these options uh, with diff the different timings that you want, just adjusting these variables and again what. Uh, what they're referencing within there as well. And if you wanted to get even fancier, you could also add an appearance if we wanted to. Uh, and that way, when we run this next, we can hit Q appearance and um, all of these options will, will show up with the appearance, which is kind of cool. So you could like have all of your Go releases to be read or something. So it's just kind of like more instinctual. All right, so now we're gonna go back in here and we have a bunch of lines and I'll, I usually try to like separate these with something like that so that way I just know that there's breaks uh, as opposed to having to dig through lines to figure out where the start of one of these actually is. Uh, in order to pull this off we're going to need six lines here and we'll name this re reset. All right. Let's let's check out what we uh, what we have to do to pull this off. So, we're going to this is a complete reset of the queue. We don't want any uh, data to remain, so we want to delete Q through. And remember, this is only going to delete Q through for whatever sequence we selected in that original uh, macro. Uh, store Q, store Q one, and we can label that like empty. I guess that will work. In our next one, we can have set Q through property trig type and we're going to set that to be no trigger look at that it's kind of cool right in our next line we'll have set q through property q fade and we'll set that to be zero uh, set q through uh actually in this one we're going to want to set q off Q. Oh, hang on, we need quotations for that. Lovely syntax. Property Q fade zero. This will set the off Q property that we might have set. Uh, this will be a set sequence command again with the property wrap around. And we're going to set that to be on. And in our final line, we'll set uh, exec type page property key, and we're going to set that to be go, which is the default that I want. Okay. Again, we want to make sure that all of these are set to be um, uh, go because we have to run through. Basically, we're just we're deleting any cues in the sequence. We are storing Q1 as, and we're going to label it empty. You could also label that whatever, or maybe you don't label it at all. We'll set the trig type to be no trigger. Uh, we'll make sure all of the values are put back at zero. Um, and we're also going to make sure that wraparound is turned back on. Uh, and we'll assign that key to be go. Okay, so then for our temp release option, what we can actually do is we can copy all of these, and then we can go here and we can paste them, which is kind of cool. Um, so all of this can actually stay the same because in order to pull off a temp queue, uh, pretty much all of this can stay exactly the same. The only things that we need to change over here to make this a temp is we're gonna change the trig type uh, to be no trigger. And then we're going to set the key to be a, a temp. If that makes sense. Yep, so that it will be a, a temp release. But again, we let's make sure that we label this or else it's going to get very, uh, very sad at us. Temp release. 
uh, we will have all of our ones to go, and yeah, this this looks this looks right. Um, and you can keep going. You can just have more options if you have a sequence type uh, that you want, an executor type that you want to create, maybe that you use a lot. Um, this is where you can add that. And if you're like, well, I don't know the syntax to do that, maybe do the action uh, as you normally would and look at the command line and see what's in the command line. And then you can add that into your command here. And chances are, there's a good chance that it might work. <laughs> uh, yeah, but that's kind of the general, the general workflow there. So now that we have all of these options, we have a full reset, we have a, a go release option and a temp release option. We can uh, clear out of here. And now uh, let's hit our macro. We can hit our exec type. And now if we tap Q appearance, remember how we set that earlier? We have all of these pretty colors. Uh, and uh, maybe we want to reset this executor. Look at what I just did. Uh, that queue is now labeled empty. Uh, it's removed the the follow time wrap around is back on. Maybe I'm like, oh, actually, I need this to be a temp release with a half a second pay time. Boom! I've I've hit that and uh, wrap around's back off. It still says empty because we don't actually have a label uh, in that one, but you know whatever. Uh, and this now has a release time of five with no trick type. So yeah, this is this is exactly uh, this is exactly what we want, which is really cool. We can hold that. The key is now temp. We can release it. Yeah. So that that is the workflow to create this handy macro. You can keep. You can have whole bunch of options here you can copy this line you can change up your times uh, and yeah you can add more stuff I use this all the time definitely a very handy macro uh, I know this has been a lot of syntax if you made it this far please like this video <laughs> uh, but I hope this has been helpful and maybe something you guys can introduce into your workflows thanks for sticking with me